Today we're going to save this 2015 MacBook Air from the e-waste pile. First thing we're going to do, we're going to upgrade the internal hard drive. Second thing, we're going to install Linux on it. And third, we're going to try to edit this entire video on it. So do you think that this 2015 MacBook Air can uh, run a modern Linux distribution, run modern apps, and then render a video? Let's get into it. Before we get started, we've got a couple of things that we need to get together. First things first, we need a little screwdriver. This is a pencil lobe type driver that's specific to Apple products because Apple uses these little pencil lobe screws. So there's 10 of them here to get the back cover off on this MacBook Air. I've got my little flash drive with uh, an image of uh, Mint Linux that we're gonna install. I've got a replacement NVMe drive, so just a cheap one from Silicon Power. 512 gigs. This MacBook Air shipped with 128 gigs, so it'll be a nice update. And then to make sure that this NVMe fits this MacBook Air, we're going to put it in this tiny little adapter. It was like 11 or $12 from Amazon. I'll link it in the comments. Um, but what it does is adapts this NVMe to be able to fit the Apple-specific drive in this. All right, let's open this thing up. First thing you'll notice is that these two top screws here are going to be a little bit longer than your other screws here. So you see this one's a little bit longer than this one in the corner that we pull out. So much shorter. Now keep that in mind when you start putting this back together. All right, the one drive we're gonna remove is this one right here. Replace it with our new drive. Gonna need to kind of click it. There we go. Drive swap complete. Put her back together. Remember our two longer screws go right up here. All right, now that it's all back together, we'll get our flash drive ready and we'll install our new OS. All right, so 
I've got my flash drive plugged in and I've got a video out here in the Thunderbolt cable so that we can hopefully get some uh, screen recording here of our install process. We're gonna hit the power button and once I see the screen kind of light up, I'm gonna hold the option key and it's gonna give us um, it's gonna give us a boot menu to be able to choose to boot off of this USB drive. And for giggles, we're gonna go with EFI boot on the right side. And I only know this because I couldn't get the system to boot with whatever EFI on the left side. Not sure why, but let's give it a go here. All right, we're at a live desktop. Up here on the top left, we're gonna go install Linux Mint in English. Pretty standard install process here, nothing wild. We're gonna use this machine, so we're gonna we are gonna want to install Codex so that we've got things rendering properly, YouTube videos, etc. When we browse the web, yep, we want to erase erase a disk and install. You can see down here, Dev NVMe. It's the NVMe drive that we installed earlier. All right, so we're installed and uh, we're gonna go ahead and restart and uh, go from there. All right, I don't know if our Wi-Fi drivers uh, worked out here and if not, we'll, uh, we'll fix it. Yeah, there we go, we're offline. Doesn't look like we've got any network connectivity. So what we'll do is we're gonna use this little USB to ethernet and uh, we're gonna plug her in, connect her to the hardwire network and download some drivers real fast. All right, so the driver manager here, now that we're hardwired in, uh, did a quick scan, tells us, hey, 
we need some drivers, get them installed. All right, let's restart and unplug our hardwired adapter, see what happens. All right, we're back and all right, we got Wi-Fi. So I did some performance testing before switching to Linux and I ran Geekbench 5 and Web Speedometer 3. And interestingly, for Geekbench 5, our single core scores went up 9.7%, multi-core up 5.5%, and for Web Speedometer 3, which is just a great compilation of web-based tasks that you might encounter on a daily basis, we're up a staggering 26.8% just by switching to Linux here from Mac OS. All right, so what's it actually feel like to use Linux Mint on this 2015 MacBook Air? Well, it's actually pretty snappy here. I'll run a quick NeoFetch. You can see that uh, we're jamming out on some Intel HD graphics. We've got four gigs of RAM, and we're rocking a dual-core four-thread i5-5250U. This machine's not too bad, so... Launching things like uh, Office with LibreOffice Writer, snappy, feels responsive. Even launching Google Chrome is also super responsive. And hey, one of my favorite features about this, we can snap windows. Look at that. Ugh, love this. Super useful, super productive. It just works out of the box, minus a couple of pieces like the Wi-Fi that we had to uh, get set up. One piece that I cannot, for the life of me, get figured out is uh, getting this FaceTime camera to work on this MacBook Air. I've tried a couple of solutions suggested by members in different forums, things like that, but I just can't get it to work. Not a deal breaker, though. So Let's see if we can't... Um, do some video. All right, so we're 1080 60. We're dropping a handful of frames. Looks like 1080 60 is probably going to be your limit on a machine like this in terms of your YouTube, YouTube playback, video playback pieces. But that's not half bad at all. We're certainly not going to be able to go any greater. One thing I was really surprised about with this machine was its ability in Caden Live here to edit video. Obviously, I've got a super basic timeline here um, with very, very little transitions. Um, on the back part here, I've got some light uh, color grading and increasing white balance um, and exposure. And we've got uh, kind of some choppier playback. Um, but overall, for a 1080 timeline, this is working exceptionally well. Uh, certainly surprised me. This is my first time using Caden Live. And uh, it's an overall, it's a really great experience here on this decade-old MacBook. So if you were somebody that was looking into, you know, a cheap entry-level way to get into video editing or video production for YouTube or anything else for that matter. Uh, repurposing an old machine like this that you can save from being e-waste uh, is certainly a great start into a workflow like that. Something else you might use this PC for is some simple office-based tasks. So I've got a small little data set here and let's pivot it and see what we can pull out of it.
Look at that quick, snappy performance. Something like this would work well for a simple office task, simple web browsing, pulling up your Gmail or whatever mail app you use. So overall, a PC like this is a great option if you're on a budget. You've got some pretty fair performance out of a device like this. It's snappy, just browsing the web. Something like this would be great for checking emails, basic office type tasks, and even uh, the occasional video editing. So as we've shown here, great way to take something like this and uh, save it from the e-waste pile, repurpose it. And in this instance, this battery is still great. Uh, this device, obviously, we could get another couple more years out of it if we needed to. So great option for a travel laptop or secondary laptop or maybe even a laptop for a small child in the family. All right, so in conclusion, is running out to get one of these 2015 MacBook Airs uh, to start your YouTube channel for 2025 a great idea? Absolutely not. If you've got something like this at home and you can repurpose it with a Linux distribution, you're in for a treat. Works well, functions well, battery lasts for hours just like it should, and uh, it might just surprise you. So save this technology from the trash, repurpose it, and uh, give it to a family member or keep it for a, a vacation. Thanks for watching.